Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about the pulse repetition frequency. Pulse repetition frequency is generally defined as the frequency at which the pulse is being repeated. Okay, normally the basic definition is why we are calling it as pulse repetition frequency. The frequency at which the pulse is being repeated. That means at uh, every pulse repetition frequency like uh, PRF, it is indicated by PRF. So it is uh, represented by FP. Pulse repetition frequency is represented by FP. So at this particular frequency FP, the pulse is being repeated like this. So the frequency from this pulse to second pulse is nothing but FP. Okay. Now, what is the importance of this pulse repetition frequency here? Pulse repetition frequency has a significant impact on the identification of ambiguous and unambiguous targets. Okay, it is having significant impact on the identification of so use it to we can say it is used to identify identify ambiguous and unambiguous targets. I will tell you why and how. Okay. Now, before going into identify ambiguous and unambiguous targets using this pulse repetition frequency, first let me explain what is the ambiguous target and what do you mean by unambiguous target. The time gap from here to here, see here, we are giving very shortest pulse width. Shortest pulse width, that means just we are transmitting a signal for only uh, less time period and waiting for the echo signals for long period. This is the waiting period. Waiting period. Waiting period for echo signals. Okay. <clears throat> Suppose if the target is located at long distance, I am explaining clearly. Listen. This is the period I am waiting. Okay. I am explaining in terms of time period. Okay. See, this is the pulse width I have transmitted, light pulse width, PW, pulse width. So, this is the pulse width I have transmitted and I am waiting for this much of time period for the echo signals. Okay. Suppose if the target is located at very long distance, the target is located at very long distance. In this particular period from here to here, from here to here, the target echo signal is not received. Okay. And after the transmission of second pulse, that echo has been received. Because of its long distance. Okay. As the target is located at very long distance, I have not received the echo pulse within the first half cycle. First cycle. I have received the echo signal after the transmission of second pulse. Now, the user who is working on this one the waveform is going to be represented like this now by seeing this waveform by seeing this waveform what we can think there is no target for the first pulse this is the first pulse and this is the second pulse there is no target for the first pulse the target is occurred and appeared at the second pulse so this echo pulse is due to this pulse we may think like this Okay, but actually what happened because of the target is located at the longer distance, this echo is due to first pulse. Okay, it is arrived late. Okay, the target echo is generated after the transmission of second pulse. So, by seeing this waveform, we may have an ambiguity that this echo, is, this echo pulse is due to the first pulse or second pulse. This is this type of targets are known as ambiguous targets. Con confusion. Ambiguous targets. 
that means we cannot exactly identify the echo is due to this pulse or this pulse first pulse or second pulse suppose if the echo is generated within the first uh, cycle itself then we can surely say that the echo is due to the transmission of first pulse okay that means one radar system is there with us and one target is there okay when we transmit the first pulse like this when we transmit the first pulse we have got the received echo signal within the same cycle then we can surely say that this echo is due to this one so it is an unambiguous echo signal this type of echoes are known as unambiguous unambiguous means no confusion in such echoes but as yes, the target is located at very long distance it is going like this but the waiting period is over meanwhile we have transmitted the second pulse also after the transmission of second pulse if you have received the echo signal such type of echo signals are known as ambiguous targets ambiguous echoes are also known as multiple time around echoes are simply second time around echoes second time around echoes okay so if the target echo is generated within the first cycle that is nothing but normal and ambiguous echo if the echo is generated after the transmission of second pulse such type of echoes are known as second time around echoes or multiple time around echoes why it is multiple time around echoes means even if the target is generated after the transmission of third pulse after the transmission of fourth pulse so third time around echo fourth time around echo all are generally known as multiple time around echoes okay so second time around echo there is an ambiguity with such type of uh, multiple time around echoes or second time around echoes now we have an importance with this pulse repetition frequency to identify which is the ambiguous target and which is the unambiguous target now let us see how this uh, can be identified see take this diagram as an example okay see this is the first pulse this is the second pulse and third pulse fourth pulse for example consider three to four pulses like this at a pulse repetition frequency prf so the time gap between the first pulse and second pulse is p is equal to zero which is generated by the first pulse and t is equal to one by pulse repetition frequency nothing but tp we can simply call it as tp is equal to one by fp pulse repetition frequency again second cycle one t is equal to 2 by fp 3 by fp and so on now let us consider there are three targets a b and c a is somewhat nearer to the radar system b is somewhat far away from the radar system and c is very far away from the radar system okay so this is the position of radar system this is the target A which is nearer to the radar system and B is somewhat far away and C is very far away from the radar system. Now when we are transmitting a signal like this only one pulse I am transmitting. This pulse will touch this target A and reflected back and again the same pulse will touch B and reflected back the same pulse will touch C and reflected back. That means A the target echo from A is received first the target b is received next and later the target c echo will come now what we have understand from this one is the target echo is an unambiguous target because it is generated within the first cycle itself the target echo is an unambiguous echo within the first cycle but what about the b and c b is generated b the b and this c what I have whatever I have rounded here these two echoes are generated only because of the first pulse only because of this first pulse but unfortunately they are generated after the transmission of second pulse and after the transmission of third pulse because of their distances hope you understand now okay as B is somewhat far away from radar system it is generated after the transmission of second pulse but it is due to only first pulse and C is generated after the transmission of third pulse but this echo is due to 
first only these two are first only c so this a is for, for because of first pulse and this b is because of first pulse and this c is also because of first pulse okay now after the transmission of second pulse again once once uh, first pulse is completed second pulse is originated because of second pulse also same case is repeated see the second pulse second pulse uh, when second pulse is transmitted again a dash will come b dash will come and again this is for third pulse c dash will come after some somewhere around here this is c dash which is generated because of second pulse Hope you understand now. Okay, I am repeating. A is as as the A distance is very less, it is generated within the first cycle. As B is somewhat far away from the radar system, it is generated after the transmission of second pulse. And C is very far because of the distance, it is generated after the transmission of third pulse. But A, B, C, these three are generated only because of first pulse only. Okay, these are the equals due to first pulse only. So, as B and C are generated because of second and uh, after the transmission of second and third pulses, they are generally known as multiple time around echoes. Multiple time around echoes. So, now when you are using an A scope display, A scope display, what it will do? It is like your CRO. On x axis, it shows time, on y axis, it shows amplitude. Amplitude of echo. Okay, when you are using the NASCOPE display to display such, such type of waveform, this type of waveform, it is generally represented like this. See, appearance of three targets on A scope display. How it is appearing? A is here, C is here, B is here, and this is only for one pulse. Okay, by seeing the same waveform, we cannot identify which is the ambiguous target and which is the unambiguous target. Suppose, see, I, as I have explained clearly here, by taking one, two, three pulses elaborately, you may know which is the ambiguous target and which is unambiguous target. But by seeing this pulse, this waveform alone, without seeing this, this waveform alone, you cannot identify which is the ambiguous target and which is the unambiguous target okay so how to identify then in such case how to identify suppose this this is the only waveform i have given it to you or given it to the user who is sitting in front of the radar uh, receiver then who then how he can identify which is the ambiguous and which is unambiguous target now our pulse repetition frequency has the importance so now what happens i am changing the pulse repetition frequency suppose in the same waveform, first waveform, I am uh, decrease or increase the pulse liberation frequency. What happens? Decrease the pulse liberation frequency. I am taking a uh, uh, condition that decrease the pulse liberation frequency. As I have decreased the pulse liberation frequency, what happens to the time period? Time period increases. Then the second pulse may be arrived here because of its high time period so second pulse may be around here so when this is second pulse arrived here what about the b now b comes into ambiguous uh, b comes into an ambiguous range from the ambiguous range previously it was in after the transmission of second pulse but it is now before the second pulse only whose position is changing b position will be changed and again c also will be changed so the positions of multiple time around echoes will be changed but whereas the uh, position of ambiguous target will not change because of the change in the pulse duration frequency so uh, when you are changing the pulse duration frequency slightly if you decrease the pulse duration frequency what happens there will be a change in the positions of b and c but the position of b a is constant because it is an ambiguous target so by doing this experiment we can identify which is the ambiguous and which is unambiguous targets okay then how to write the equation how to write the r true value at what distance the target is located how to write see let us consider the target is located at a distance r1 r1 so we can write from here to here here to here it is r1 the target location 
okay so the target is generated the target echo is produced at r1 or again the same repeated after this time period one more r1 so how we can write it as r unambiguous plus r1 from here to here the distance is r unambiguous and again 2 r unambiguous plus r1 so we can write it as r1 r r1 plus r and 1 unambiguous 1 from here to here the pulse is repeated for every unambiguous range the distance from here to here it is r unambiguous or we can also write it as r1 plus 2 r and 1 and it is repeated for n number of times for n number of pulses okay so this is what the what is the importance of pulse repetition frequency in the identification of ambiguous and unambiguous targets. Thank you.